Welcome to Integrity Inspire, your daily dose of inspiration and motivation, featuring the bright and talented members of the Integrity Marketing Group family. Now, here's your host, Integrity co-founder and CEO, Brian W. Adams. Hello, everybody. Thanks so much for joining the Inspire podcast today. We started Inspire when COVID hit with this idea that we wanted to get together, share inspiring stories, and just like share hope, especially in a time where there wasn't a lot of hope in the world. We started out with interviewing our partners and sharing their amazing stories. And one of our first interviews we had was with my great friend, Lenny Anderson, and he shared some of his amazing stories about getting started in the business and things of that nature. And I am so excited to welcome Lenny Anderson back to the Inspire podcast, this time via video, and share his story. Lenny, man, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Brian. I have to brag for a lot of reasons. First of all, Lenny, you were one of our first partners in 2018 Mm -hmm. that joined us, and you have a huge milestone coming up that this year your company is celebrating, Golden Care is celebrating its 50th anniversary. That is an incredible story that you guys are celebrating your your 50th anniversary. Now, you've been in the business a little longer than that. Yep. The legacy that you've had, and I, I, I truly just have to say, there are a few living legends in our business, icons that have really transformed the industry. And for me, you're at the top of that list. And you're also one of the most encouraging partners that we've ever had. And, and you've been such a great mentor to me for years. Every Almost every week, I get a text message from Lenny encouraging me, saying, hey, great job, that, that Inspire was great, keep up the great work. And I just want you to know on behalf of you know myself how much that means to me. And so thank you for being such a great partner. Again, thank you, Brian. Man, thank I, you, and I, I truly mean it, I truly mean it. And uh, awful nice kind words you say. You know. Well, I love what we're able to do together. You've done so many incredible things, and I, I, I can't really. I mean, your your team has been incredible, and you've been blessed by not only a great team, but you also have gotten to work with your family. Mm-hmm. So, Correct. your uh, daughter Lori works with us. Your granddaughter Jessica, your son Todd worked with us, and then the the rest of your team has been so incredible. Yep. Mike Lynch is another living yeah, legend. Yeah, He's celebrating right. his fiftieth yeah, year in the business. Right. In the business, but Golden Care, when you started that, did you ever imagine what it could become? Ah, uh, no, <laughs> no, never ever did. You know, you you like to start something and finish it and be successful at it, and but not thought of. 50 years down the road, you know, yeah, at that time. It's just keep it going and keep swinging and keep working, you know. If you, if you think about the, I, 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 it's got to be hundreds of thousands of people and the fam, millions of family members yep. that you've had an impact that they may, and I talk about this all the time, you know, people won't know that, that you know, we had that much of an impact on making sure that they got their financial well-being mm-hmm. uh, because, you know, it, it, we're not the ones who are actually selling the policies these days, um, but their families, when they're at a nursing home, especially in the long-term care business, mm-hmm. which you've completely innovated, it, it's amazing to think about how many families you change their their family legacy, their life in so many different ways. Have you done that in Medicare, life insurance, and, and so many others? So I know you've got to be proud just kind of looking back oh, on that. Definitely, very, extremely proud, extremely wow. proud. It's a great milestone. And uh, now we just got to keep it going. Yeah, we're, we're just getting started. That, you know me. I say yeah, this all the time. Right. Oh, getting, but that's one reason I came with Integrity and you. Yeah. Really. And that was to keep it going. Yeah. I knew you would. You well, know, we're. Just, uh, it's been an honor to be able to be a, play a small part in, in the legacy that you're building here. Now, let's let's talk about where you got started. So, for those of you who don't know, Golden Care is uh, headquartered in, in Minnesota, right outside of Minneapolis. Incredible business. It really is innovated the long-term care business throughout the U.S. And y'all have created some of the best products in the market and truly have transformed people's lives through that. You've also expanded into Medicare Advantage, Medicare Supplement Plans. And now you're, I think, the nation's leader in short-term care plan and plans and other home health care plans and other plans. It's just been amazing to see how you've always been innovating. Did you grow up in Minnesota? Yeah, grew up in Minnesota. What part, where, where'd you grow up? Uh, uh, basically North Minneapolis. 
Right, and and then uh, we moved further out north in the suburbs when I was seven years old. When you were seven years yeah, old, yeah. Do, you, do you remember that when you were seven? Uh, I, I actually do. Yeah, I actually do. Yeah. That is uh, that's, that's so fun. I, I I've got a nine year old, and I wonder uh, how much they'll remember, remember on right. that. Now, now one of my favorite parts of your story. Well, I've got a lot of favorite parts of your story, and I, I'm honored to be able to help share them here. Now, you were in high school, and you ended up. Dropping out of high school at the age of 15. Tell me about that. Correct. Well, I, high school at that time uh, was something that I looked at that was I wanted to help some people, which I seen them fighting for money all the time. Like and your family? Put, or? Yeah, yeah. yeah, part of them. And I said, you know, I really don't know if uh, education is going to help me that much. Hmm. So I decided, and I didn't care for school on top of it that much. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so anyway, uh, at that time I quit school at, at 15. Was so, that, was that your freshman year? Were you in ninth grade? Yeah, is that? going in 10th. Going, going into 10th. 10th. So 10th they just grade. marked me tardy, you know, so, so because my birthday's October 3rd and of course school starts in September. Yeah. So they just marked, and the principal says, I'll just mark you tardy <laughs> because he's, I guess you're gone anyway, Lenny. So <laughs> yeah, that way, so, so uh, that, that's the way it happened. And I, I had a job already. And so you, you, you left school. Now this is like, I believe America is the greatest country on the face Absolutely. of the earth. And I, I think that there's, this, there, there's so many different parts of your story that proves just the American dream in so yep. many different ways. And, and you've lived out the American dream. You're not only one of our largest shareholders, you're one of the most successful people I've ever met, but you, you dropped out of high school at 15 and you started working in the food industry. Tell me about that. Uh, well, they, they, they were food trucks. I, actually, it's for my brother-in-law. He owned, he owned a, a restaurant in Minneapolis. And uh, anyway, and he had a food truck. <clears throat> and he said, well, why don't you come on to work for me? And this is during the summertime before it. at that time I was waiting to turn 15 or not waiting to turn 15 because I was 15 at the time. And he said that, you know, just drive the food truck and that part of it. And, and so I, which I did and uh, built the food truck route up somewhat. And he says, well, you're good at you know, bringing on more spots. So, you know, what else can we do? I said, well, we can start another route if you want to. And he said, well, let's do that. So we started another route, and, and the way that we started the routes was that, you know, you'd go follow the other trucks that was actually the food trucks are doing it first, and, because there's a lot of manufacturing around there. So we'd mark the time, what time he was there, how long he was there for, how many people kind of got fed and things like that. So then about two days, we'd follow them around like that and have all the stops. And then So the third day, then we'd go in there before him and give all the food away. Just give it away yeah, we'd for free. It free. Come on and try our food, okay? And we'd do that for two or three days, and before you know it, we had to stop because our food was much better. <laughs> yeah. so, so we had yeah, got the route going and uh, that, and then I got threatened a little bit, so. They, they didn't like that very uh, much. No, no, no. no. <laughs> what what uh, was it like getting threatened <laughs> at 15 years old? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I wasn't really that big, of course. And uh, <laughs> and so so then uh, i tell my brother-in-law part about it one, one afternoon, and uh, where they had me up on the hood of the car, and uh, I said, well, this ain't gonna work. So I, I they, they grabbed you and they threw you uh, up on yeah, the yeah, oh, man. Two of them. But, but anyway, so I said, well, we'll fix that. So he calls this fellow and he says, hey, just come on a ride with Lenny, which is about six foot five and, <laughs> and I like to fight. So you, so, so you had a bodyguard. I had you had a bodyguard at 15 <laughs> yeah, years old. Yeah, yeah. You drop out of high school, you're a successful businessman, <laughs> you're an innovator, and you have a bodyguard at yeah. 15. So then we that's took, incredible. Yeah, then we took that route, and then we built another route, and that part of it so it kept it right on going. So then you left that, and you started becoming a tin man, right? I actually I had a couple of different things going on at that time. Okay. I worked construction, okay, and then I had a partial sunstroke, so I couldn't work construction any longer because every time I'm going in the sun, I just get sick and headaches and oh, stuff man. like that. So anyway, then another friend of my brother-in-law's was in the trucking business, and he said, "Well, you want to come drive truck for me?" I said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." So. So, and then after I did that for about a year, somewhere right, right in that vicinity, uh, he was having some trouble. And uh, that part, he said, I'm covering payroll and different things, you know, just uh, on, on the shoe, you know, it just yeah. that's so close that uh, he said, you know, I'd like you guys to, you know, get into trucking business yourself, which I did. I bought a truck, started hauling, hauling How freight. old were you? I, I think I was 19. 19. Yeah, you 19. buy your first truck. Yeah. And, wow. uh, and that so, 
and was married, of course, at the time I got married when I was just turned 18. Yeah, so I had a family I had to take care of. So anyway, I, at that time until, that was going extremely well until the union stopped me. Really? 544. And they said, yeah, you can't do what you're doing. And I believed them. I definitely believed the 544 <laughs> union at that time. And so, so anyway, it was uh, really comical because he said, you come on in and, and visit me and, and see, because they hadn't told me what they were going to do to me yet. But they said I had to stop driving immediately, but I talked to him in a couple of weeks' time. So, so anyway, I go on, I visit him. He said, you know, he said, you're, you're a pretty good guy. And he's you should actually join our insurance team and sell insurance. And I said, I'm not an insurance guy by any means. Get me, you know, there ain't no way in hell I ever sell insurance. You know, so it's kind of a funny deal. He's a very nice guy, but I knew that I couldn't drive trucks no more. I didn't know <laughs> You're that. like, I'm out of the trucking business. I, I'm out of the trucking so business. So is that how you got in the insurance business? Yeah, uh, no, then I went into the tin business. Okay, yes. so so if you watch these, I, I think Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, and some of these old oh, tin, movies yeah. that were, they were selling aluminum siding, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. That uh, you, you would yeah. see these amazing old movies, Coffees for Closers yeah. and yeah. all that, yeah. which are just great sales training movies. So. So you started in the tin business. Tell mm -hmm. us about what that was like. Well, basically is what it is. We, we was doing tin, remodeling, doors, windows, dip, dip, things like that. And so on, on tin, of course, you know, and, uh, and some of the companies that was actually in the business was mm, they had front man, what they called the front guy, and then the closer. And the closer would sit outside until all the presentation was done and that part of it. And then if the, the fellow that was doing the presentation couldn't, make a you know make yeah. the sale then he would say well let me go talk to my boss he said talk to my car. manager yeah, yeah my manager yeah he's <laughs> out in the car said, can i bring him in they said well sure so then he would close the sale so that that's the way that was going. so were you the closer no, well partly <laughs> at, at some point <laughs> you know, pretty quickly yeah, yeah yeah so so, so then how did you get in the insurance business I met a fellow, Tom Crotty was his name, and we become good friends over this period of six, seven years, because I had one other small businesses in between that, and, and that part of it. So he said, Lenny, I'd like you to come on, and, and we used to meet for coffee now and then, so. But he says, come on, I'd like you to see the, uh, the insurance business. I said, Tom, there's no insurance in me. You know, <laughs> no, the insurance business just doesn't belong to Lenny, you know. So he said, no, he said, this is different, you know. I said, no, after I sell all my friends and relatives, who do I go to? You know, that, that's my yeah. answer to him. He said, no, no, it isn't like that. He said, you just got to come and see it. So I went with him. I said, well, okay, we set a date for a week or two weeks. And, and uh, so we went out and we drove, uh, started at 6.30 in the morning and we got home at 11.30 at night and drove 137 miles, a lot of miles. And uh, we, let me say, we, wasn't too prosperous that day. We didn't, didn't make much money. Didn't do that well. <laughs> no, You're like, no. I told you, this isn't for me. <laughs> <laughs> and so anyway, I just kept pushing them off and pushing them off. So finally, about three weeks later, he said, well, he said can we get together, you know, and I'll take you out one more day and say, okay, and now I'm going to say, okay, I tried it, I looked at it, and I'm not going to do it. That, that was my whole thought at, all the time. And anyway, so went out there, and that day we had a nice day. We made some good money. And we got home earlier and we didn't drive that many miles. <laughs> so I said, well, I like that. So I said, well, you know, I, the, what I liked about the insurance business is that every day I seen people working at it, they made yeah. money. Yeah. They made a paycheck. Being nice to the people, not, you know, being very nice to the people because the people will take care of you if you take yeah. care of them. Just that simple to me. And so I said, anyway, I'm going to try it. And, I went out a couple of days after that by myself, and I made my first sale, and it made a nice, nice day of money that day. And uh, so I said, this ain't too bad, so I'll try another couple of days. And those next couple of days went by, did the same thing all of I said, you know, I'm working seven days a week on home improvements, because yeah. you want canvassing and all that stuff. Uh, to, to make it because you work evenings and holidays yeah. and all Saturdays Anytime and Anytime people would be yeah. home. Yeah. Anytime that they'd be home. So I said, well, after uh, I did that for a few days, I said, yep, I think I'm going to do this. I'm going to see if I really enjoy it. So I just loved the business and never looked back. You know, I love, I love a couple of points. I think, I think a lot of people forget how hard it is to get started in anything. Uh, but you, you made a great point there that if you work hard you'll, yep. and you take care of people, yep. then you can be really successful in this Absolutely. business. And that's, that's something that, 
that I know you've just preached for so long and you just lived in, in, throughout your life. Now, I also love the fact that you were always innovating. You were always looking for ways, you're, always, you're still always looking for ways to innovate, find new ways to do things, be more successful. I remember the story about how you would actually take somebody with you and ask them if, if the client was nice, you'd ask them if they could <laughs> borrow their phone, tell us that story. Well, at the time, we was working in small towns. Yeah. And so the way that we did it at that time to keep a lead source going was that we'd go canvas the area and sell the first people that we sold. Canvassing and, the area means like door, door knocking. Knock. That's how I got Strict, started yeah. too. Strict. You would literally walk up, <laughs> oh, yeah. door knock, oh, yeah, and uh, try try yeah. to find yeah. somebody at home yeah. and talk yeah. to them about life insurance. And, and so at that time, you may, maybe see them in the garden or whatever, yeah. so you started talking to them, of course. And as it, in 1966, that's when Medicare came really involved. And so so anyway, you had something to talk to them about. But but then is what we would do is that we sold somebody, then would ask them if we could use their telephone. And, and we could bring somebody in to use their telephone four hours a day. But we first asked them, how many party lines do you have? Because everybody had a party line. Yeah. If it's a four line or two line or whatever it was. But we never took anybody with a four line because that, that was the people was on their phones too much. Yeah. So we wanted to keep on going. So it's just a two party line. So then they would work every day that they would so, come So in. Let, me, let me explain this because a lot of people don't know what a party line oh, is. Okay. But my grandparents had a party, party line. So in the old days, a lot of people couldn't afford their own phone line. No, I mean, this is right. way before cell phones, before yeah. anything else. And you would have a party line where you would have two, three, four people on uh, neighbors, yeah, yeah. Uh, typically on on that line. And so my grandparents' house, they their next door neighbor and them shared a party, party line. line. And if if somebody called them, it would ring a certain way. Yeah. And if they called their neighbor, it'd ring a certain way. Two shorts and, or two longs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And so and and I remember you always had to. Like I was staying with my grandparents, if you if you ever picked up the phone, you had to check and see yeah, if anybody's oh, yeah. talking, and then yeah, you had to hang yeah. up because or if they didn't hang up, you knew they was listening. Or they would be <laughs> listening. So you would go in. So so I mean, think about this. So you would go in and say, "Can we borrow your telephone?" And are you on a party line? How many yeah. how many people are on there? <laughs> yeah. So if there's four, there, there's too many people. Yeah, they yeah. couldn't split yeah. it up. Yeah. But if there was two. Yeah. Now tell us exactly yeah. what you do. Well, was so so then at that time and. I had a telemarketer that was extremely good. He was 72 years old, but the only thing is where we was working. He lived 60 miles beyond that. <laughs> so every day I used to pick him up at eight o'clock in the morning, and then I'd drive him back this 50, 60 miles. Oh my gosh. And put him in the house at nine o'clock, he started calling. So then I'd work until one o'clock, then I'd go back and get him and drive him back home. So you would sell somebody a policy mm -hmm. and say, do you have a party line? Do you yeah. have two people yeah. on? Can I leave, what was his name? Do you remember his uh, Mike, name? Yeah, yeah, Mike. Can I can I leave Mike here yep, and let yep, him yep. stay on the phone? So Mike would literally you, and then you would leave and go canvas the area oh, yeah, or yeah. or work the leads or go, whatever. Go work the leads. Yeah. And you would leave Mike <clears throat> there for how long? Uh, four day, hours. Four hours. Four hours, five days a week. So you would leave him at somebody's house, yeah. and they like, and people let you do that. Oh, they they took such great care of you. And so yeah. Mike and Mike would sit there. Yeah. And, and just call. use their phone yeah, call, the whole time. Call. And yeah. set you appointments. Yeah, a lot of them even would say, well, you can use my name if you want. You know, and oh, that, man. oh yeah. I mean, yeah. So, I'm sitting so here with Miss Smith and yeah, and yeah. she wanted me to give you a call. Give you a call. Oh my gosh, yeah. that is so, what I mean, solid. It's the same thing, What I, I like I said before, if you take good care of them, they'll take good care of you. So what would what was Mike doing? Like Mike would just sit in their home, and would they and call, they would it, open the telephone. They'd book make him. They just open the telephone book. Would they make him a sandwich or? Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. The sandwiches. Yeah. We. I used to bring like donuts or you know stuff like that to him all the time in that part. But then make you a sandwich. and feed him and stuff. It's just. Yeah, it's Can amazing. you imagine that yeah. happening today? Ah. Uh, yeah. No. I mean that is that is so amazing yeah. that that that's how it worked and it was so successful. Yeah. And then how would you pay Mike? How would do you remember how you paid? Yeah. Mike? No, I mean the <clears throat> company actually paid that part of it, so they would hire your own telemark your telemark. Oh, he, they, but you you hired them and you yeah. took care of them, and then they would pay them. So that's oh my god. But I just, of course give them a little bit more all the time. He's a great telemarketer. He's a great guy. Got along with everybody. What an incredible story. Now, how did you start Golden Care? Well, I had been working for uh, actually uh, a company as uh, a career manager. At that particular time, I was a state manager 
going into a regional manager with five states. But we was having some problems with the company, and I spent all my day putting out fires that the company was yeah. actually putting on. That they were, they were causing? Yeah, so, yeah it's, it's a problem. So anyway, but I had been thinking a long time about going on my own in that part because I thought, I think I could build a good shop and just have companies and broker the business and take care of the agents. So, so I actually opened a career shop at that time. In 1974. Oh, no, this was, uh, yeah, well, 1974, yeah. I opened the doors, yeah. Yeah, you yeah. opened the doors opened in the door. 1974. Yeah. Yeah. It's incredible yeah. that you were able to, I mean, it's it's amazing. Do you, do you feel like time's flying? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's it goes. incredible. It goes. It just, now, now you've had so, you've had such an incredible career. You've gotten to know, I mean, everybody and everybody certainly knows you. I mean, you've just seen the industry change in so many ways. There were... In the old days, as you might call them, I mean, there was, there was, uh, I mean, you were putting people in, in people's homes to make phone calls, like borrowing their telephone. Yeah, yeah. And, and there, you know, there was a, a lot of things that you were doing. I mean, there, you've got a lot of funny stories I know about, you know, taking age, you know, rec- hiring agents, recruiting them, taking them out on your, your boat on the lake. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know you got a good one on that one. Uh, well, good and bad, but, uh, but anyway, so. I had a, a cruiser out on this lake, so we used to have a lot of get-togethers with our agents and uh, office staff and that part of it. So it's one one time that uh, we was leaving. Uh, there was a big restaurant there called Lord Fletcher's on uh, Minnetonka. I, I, that's one of my favorite restaurants. Yeah, it's yeah. amazing. It's Lord a, Fletcher's on yeah. Lake Minnetonka in Minneapolis yeah, exactly is amazing. Right. Yeah. 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 The, uh, the the funny thing is is the mosquitoes there. <laughs> They've got that net on the back patio because uh, yeah. the mosquitoes, yeah, mosquitoes. Are, are the state bird. <clears throat> they might carry you They're away. so big. <clears throat> yeah. It's like, oh my God, what are those things? <laughs> yeah. they're, they're like, those are mosquitoes. I'm like, nothing like I've ever seen. Yeah. But that is such an amazing place. So you had your boat there. Yeah, yeah. It's tied wow. up a little ways away from there. We had a slip there, but we had dinner at uh, uh, Lord Fletcher's and as dark as 12 o'clock at night. And so we had 28 people on the boat. How big a boat is this? Yeah, it's 36 foot. Okay, that's a pretty good size boat. And one of my managers had drank too much. And he's sitting by the walkway. I was driving. And he's sitting by the walkway, or laying by the lock, walkway. He wasn't sitting. <clears throat> and I, I, He had drank too it, much. Yeah. I, his name was Tommy. <laughs> and I said, Tommy, you got to move from there. You're going to fall in the lake. And I'm giving him heck, you know. And I'm, you know, make something happen. Get out of there, you know. So anyway, and of course, everybody's screaming and hollering. So... I know more and turn around the time he's gone. Yeah, Just disappear. He disappeared. I said, where did Tommy go? So everybody, hey, where's Tom? Where's Tom? He was just laying here and now he's gone. So we decided that he fell in the lake. Oh my gosh. So now it was a twin screw uh, cruiser. So I shut everything down and we hollered like, well, he fell in, he'd swim up and you know, but he never hollered back. So then, of course, I'm going to have heroes, and they're going to jump in the water and go find my. <laughs> don't do that. that yeah. yeah, that'd be absolute insanity. Yeah. So, and we're floating out there, just waiting to hear them and stuff. And I won't, don't want to start the engine. He, he could be right below the engine. I don't know where in the heck he is. And uh, anyway, he happened to be an extremely good swimmer in high school and college. And anyway, he knew enough. Cold is down, warm is up, and he swam up. So, and it, it seemed like an hour, but later on he is hollering at us. Where are you? Because oh. it's so so dark, you oh can't see gosh. nothing, absolutely zero, you know. And so, except the lights on the boat, you know. So, but Tommy made it through and the whole thing, so. Did you keep taking agents out uh, on the no, lake? That was the last time. <laughs> I'm done. That was the last time. That's, yeah. I just needed this one time. Yeah, I found out that my liability insurance didn't cover a lot of things. Oh man. Yeah, no, so. Oh, so how I, lucky. I, I just said, can't do that no more, guys. Wow. No more. That would so, scare you to oh, death. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Cold but, is down, warm is yeah, up. Yeah, cold is down, warm is up. Oh, my gosh. He remembered that. I mean, he had drank so much. But when he come up, he was actually sober. I bet. <laughs> I would be, too. <laughs> he really was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, no. Tommy, I told you to <laughs> yeah. move. Oh, yeah. No. So yeah. so another another funny story. I know you're a huge golfer. You, you, I mean, you're a huge golfer. You owned your golf, you know, golf course. Our country club. You've done so many things in, in golf. Um, I know there's a funny story about you hitting a guy one time. Oh, well, that, that's a caddy in Mexico. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it was funny. It was, actually, I think Mike Lynch was with me, and, and uh, 
uh, there, there are a bunch of guys from the office. We're playing golf. This is a salesman's convention, you know. So anyway, uh, we had caddies, and uh, we went uh, playing the holes, and we come up this one hole, and we seen the ca some other caddies out there. And so we held up without not hitting the ball. And so then after a number, of, maybe five minutes or something like that, he's, the caddy told us, that's okay to go now. So I hit the ball, and sure as heck, here come a caddy and a golfer walking across the golf course. And don't you suppose I hit him right in the back. He was walking along, hit him in the back, and he just went boom. Fell down. Flat down. Oh flat my down. gosh. Flat down. How far was the shot? Uh, honestly, it's about 250. Honestly. In there, just yeah. cranked it. Yeah, yeah. so, so <laughs> <laughs> I could hit a little bit better than I do now. <laughs> but anyway, uh, and I said, oh my God, now what do we do? You think you yeah. killed him? And our caddy says, you don't go. I'll go down there and talk to him. I said, well, you tell him I'll pay medical bills or do whatever needs to be done. And so <clears throat> he said, okay. So anyway, he goes down there. He comes back and he's all, it's all going to be okay. I, oh, I gave him $100 to take with him to yeah. give to the, uh, the fellow on the ground. Yeah. But he said he had a welt on his back about that big. And uh, I said, well, he got hurt, you know. And that uh, uh, hard golf ball isn't <laughs> too nice. Oh my but, gosh. You know, so, so anyway, uh, the funny part really comes in the next day. That went okay. And we went in and I actually gave him a little bit more money and, uh, in that part of it. So, and just talking to him and that. The next day we go to tee off because we had tee times the next morning. And so we start, I come up on to hit the ball or something and we got six guys out there running all caddies saying hit me hit me, hit me, hit me. <laughs> <laughs> they, they knew you paid they were like we'll take some of that money yeah, we'll take some of that money. So, no, no, so. Oh, funny funny no. stuff funny stuff good memories oh yeah. my gosh and, and the, the other crazy part the day before it was in uh, at a mexican jail and found out how the jail people live <laughs> on dirt on dirt uh, how, and, how, uh, how did you end uh, up uh, were you in the mexican jail <laughs> no, no 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 we, we was doing a tour of it was doing a tour of you did a tour of a Mexican, a Mexican jail. jail, yeah, just to tell everybody. Hey, just, I I've never heard of somebody uh, <laughs> doing a tour of the that. Mexican yeah, jail. Yeah, we did a tour, and Joe Henry is one of my managers at that time. He's Anderson. When I hit the the cat, he's you're going to jail. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to. So, what was the Mexican jail like? It had it's dirt floor, oh, just totally dirt floor, dirty, and uh, oh, it was dirt floors. Oh my I mean, gosh! And everybody's so dirty and. It, was was no pitch up going to You're jail. Like, don't, you. I'll give him you, my, <laughs> as much money as he needs. That's, that's what I told him. That's what I told him. <laughs> and there were six it, guys yeah, want to get hit yeah, the next day. Yeah, yeah. Oh my six, gosh! Uh, just funny. How yeah. fun is that? Fun, fun, good stuff. You, at, now, at now, that time, it wasn't that funny. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, so. you know, I think that's how it all is. It, it, you know, as you look back on your career, you've accomplished so much. You've helped so many people. When we partnered, it was a. Um, I've got it. I, everybody knows this. I talked to. Uh, we've negotiated with some really tough people. You were the toughest, number oh, one, no. hardest negotiation I've ever gone through. I remember we were on a trip, and we're negotiating on the phone, and I'm like, Lenny, can you please let me win one point? Like, let me win something. I don't care what it is. I just have to show to our board that I actually like accomplished something and you you didn't budge one bit in fact i remember going down and uh seeing you at the hotel later that night and uh your wife jackie saying are, are you mad at us i was like no i'm not mad at you guys i was like i just want to win something because he's the hardest negotiator i've ever seen oh, oh but no, no. but uh it, it you've also been the best partner it's yeah. been incredible what have you what have you enjoyed I the most very easy. Oh yeah, oh, sure. Because <laughs> you want everything. Because yeah, yeah. I said yes to everything. Oh, that's good. <laughs> what uh, What do you great. What do you What have you enjoyed the most about what we've been building here at Integrity? Oh, just everything. You know, because myself and actually Mike Lynch was talking about. Yeah, I was getting to an age where I thought it's yeah. time to hang it up and do something else because you never know what can happen tomorrow. And the older you get, of course, you think more of it. I think, and that's so. I was thinking about, well, but what do you do with it? How do you work it? Do you keep it? Do you, you know, keep it in the family, let somebody else run it and all that. And I said, I think I'd rather just have somebody, you know, come in. And I had offers at that time yeah. about selling it to them and they was going to take it and run it and all the different things with it. And I said, it's really not, not enough for me. 
and uh, in that part, and and then with Tom and uh, Mike yeah. White, yeah, all of them, which I knew them all, you know, yeah. very well because I, I knew like Tom and Mike's father and father-in-law. Oh yeah, you know, yeah, Skip like and yeah, I, well, Skip did, and Marilyn. Yeah, I mean. yeah, Chip and Marilyn. And oh, I, I did, you know, we did business together, you know, way back years ago. That's how I got to know the boys. You know, so it was great. So, so anyway, talked to them, and then Mike White called me one day and said, "Lenny, you got to come on, take a look at this." And I said, oh, "Okay, I'll go take a look at it." And I, I really liked what Mike said, and I trusted Mike a lot. Yeah, I really did. And, and of course, Tom and Mike too. Same yeah. way, I trust them. Now I met you. I yeah, mean, that's the first time I think I, we maybe met. We, we me, met at yeah, some be, conference, be, was got got to know yeah. each other right. really well yeah. Yeah. at that yeah. point. Yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah. and uh, in that part of it, so. And what he's going to do, and what you're thinking, what is what integrity name stand stood for, and things like that, and uh, just that, yeah, you know, this is something that was could be very, very good, as close as I think I can get. Where not changing the company name, not changing the employees overnight. You know, they've got a position, they've got a job. You're not going to start laying off people, and all, all the different pieces yeah. that go with it, because at that time you got the power to do whatever you like. You know. Yeah. So, and I liked what you said at that time. Like, no, we're not going to do this. We want the company to keep running just the way it is in that part. Of, and somebody's got to run it, though. Somebody's got yeah. to run for some time. And uh, in that part, and Mike was my Mike Lynch was my GM at that time. And I said, well, my, talk to Mike about. It. Mike said, I'll stay on and do it because I wasn't really very interested in staying on myself because it's it's a term of you know four or five six years or something like that yeah. actually like up to today you know so anyway mike said yeah he'll do it so so that really opened it up also that was able to do it and uh, that's when i got very easy yeah so so but, well and, and and mike has been such a great partner yeah. to you and and what you guys have been able to do yeah. over the years has been remarkable and and he's what he's been able to do and you've you've been able to do it yeah. at integrity you know, I remember when we first started talking, it was, I mean, you were one of our first partners after we, we brought in Steve Young and HGDC. And, and I remember telling you about where we were going. Here's the vision. Yep, yep. But we were kind of building the airplane as we flew it. <laughs> Let's be honest, we're still doing that sometimes. But you really bought into the vision and you yep, were yep, like, now yep. that sounds like we yep. could do something totally different. Yep. Isn't it amazing? And I, I truly believe we're just getting started. Yeah, it's, you've it, been saying that for a long time now. I, know, I, I still believe. You I know. know you really mean it. I know you really. Mean I, it. I do. So. I and I talk. I talk to people a lot, and I say, you know, I, I, I say I want to build this for the next fifty years because mm-hmm. I'm not going to be yeah. here in the next fifty no. years, and and we want to build it for the next generation. You know, what is your what is your hope for the next generation of people serving people in insurance and financial services? Well, you know, it's changed so much the way business is conducted and done today like on the telephone and how it's working and whatever yeah. else. It's, it's amazing what's going on. And I don't know if there ever become a day that it gets easier than what it is today. You know, I just, I don't see that, uh, but it could very well be, it's going to be easier. I don't know how, but how it would be. Using agents, I, I don't think the agent's job will never be done with. You know, he's always going to have a position, have the people be able to lean on somebody for information in that part and uh, educate them so they know where they're at. So I, I think that agent's position is awful good. I, I really do that. Then you need a good company behind it. Integrity is definitely the company to me that, that I would ever, ever say to anybody. And I've told many, many people about that, you know, that integrity is, you know, the name integrity means something. It yeah. doesn't just integrity, you know, just isn't. So it just means a whole lot, Brian. You, and wow. you, you've done, I got to give you all kinds of credit. You've done just a fantastic job. Really well, have. Thank you, buddy. Yeah, yeah, that means a lot to me. Yeah, yeah. As we kind of wrap up, I think about legacy a lot, you know, mm-hmm. being remembered and like what I want to leave for the next generation. Mm-hmm. I think about this for integrity a lot of building building the business for the next 50 years mm-hmm. and making sure that we leave that legacy to the next generation as, as we continue to build integrity into something. I, I think it could be one of the great American companies yep. one day that serves people built on core values of service and integrity and family and respect and partnership. I, I just truly believe what we're doing really makes a difference. I think we're in a noble business. I mean, we <clears throat> truly help people. Absolutely. I also think about the, my legacy with my family. You know, I've got two boys, nine and 12 now, and, and thinking about what my, my legacy will be for them. What do you hope your legacy is? Well, that I was a good person. Yeah. And 
I like to share things. And if they stay with integrity, I think they'll come ahead. I yeah. really do. I tell them so. I've told them so. Yeah. Uh, because my children are part of it. Oh, yeah. And a big part in that. But, you know, it's just that I think just being good good people, uh, I think that I'm happy with that. You know, you don't have to give me money. You don't have to do yeah. nothing as long as that, that part's there, you know, and that. But uh, I, and I firmly believe that and mean it all the way through. I love that. I say, people ask me a lot of times, do you hope your kids end up in your business? Mm-hmm. What do you hope your kids do? Yeah, my, my nine-year-old wants to be Patrick Mahomes, and he doesn't realize <laughs> that uh, he probably got my athletic ability, so that's probably not going to happen. Um, but my true goal for my family is I hope that they're, I hope my boys are kind and yep. they're productive. Yep. Yep. I hope they find a place that they can give back and serve in, in the world. And I, I hope that they're kind. And, and I love that you're saying the same thing, because yep. I think if, if we can do that, if we can live by the core values that, that we are and built on this foundation of integrity in every aspect of life, every, life yeah. not, all, just, all yeah. not just in business, but yeah. in everything that we do, I think we'll all be great. And, and on behalf of our entire industry, certainly on behalf of integrity, I want you to know you've made such a big difference in our lives and the, the life of the, the entire industry, the lives of millions of Americans and the way that you've served them. And you've been one of the kindest and best people I've ever personally gotten to know. And it has been an honor. It is an honor to have you as one of my greatest mentors. And so I want you to know how much you inspire me, especially on this podcast well, and in life in general. And thank you for being our partner. Well, thank you very much, Brian. I love you, brother. Okay, I, I really you. do. Ladies and gentlemen, I get emotional thinking about just the impact that great leaders, and we've got a lot of great leaders, uh, but great leaders like Lenny and Mike Lynch and, and all of the great team at Golden Care that you guys have, the impact that you've made of making this decision, I'm going to start something 50 years ago and then today to see what it's become and see where it's going. And and now that we're able to holistically serve people with their life, health, and wealth, I think it's just the beginning of where we can go from here. Yeah, and you know, your your employees, your agents, everybody realizes that, you know. One of the things I didn't say is that, you know, from from my family business, I retired a mother, I retired two brothers, and one sister out of wow. our business. Now with I'm Jessica taking and, care of your and, and Lori uh, still going, and my son Todd said, it's good. I'm going to retire, Dad. It's, I said, you guys do whatever you want to do. So, uh, but they've got that opportunity and that, that option. Which Just because one. you decided to start a business yep. in, in 1974 and the generational impact, that legacy that you have is going to oh, continue to I, reverberate into generations. Great, great yeah, grandkids great. are going to be talking about yep. Lenny Anderson yep. and the impact you've had. I just had. had a great grandson. I know. Great. Congratulations. Yeah. Your yeah. first, right? Yeah. My first, yep. Oh, yep. my gosh. What's his name? Nixon. Yep. Nixon. Nixon what Anderson. What a cool yep. Nixon yep. Anderson. Yep. Your name so. continues. Yep. How cool well, is that? Well, we needed him. <laughs> <laughs> the Anderson was going away. <laughs> don't don't so, lose Anderson. So don't lose oh, Anderson. This is, you know, he's just Andersons, beginning. but they're not my family. So, so wow. it's all good. All good stuff. Well, you've you've had an incredible journey. And we're just getting started. Yeah. We're you, you're you're uh, listen. You're you you're just getting started too. Yeah. We're going to make a huge I, impact in in millions more lives yeah. together. And so absolutely. again, thank you. I, uh, no, I appreciate you, my friend. Thank you, Brian. I you, love you. you. You've been a wonder. You really have. I love you from I, the bottom I, of my heart. I, I call my energy bunny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Oh. No. Because he he just goes and goes and goes. You know. Well, you really do. And, well, uh, you're, you're something else. You really are something else. It, the mold is gone on you. Well, yeah, that, that's for sure. So that means many, a lot. You, I want to thank you many, many thank times. Thank you for trusting us. Yeah. And all of you, I hope that you're as inspired as I am by Lenny and just his legacy and where we're going from here. There's not many businesses that, that make it to 50 years, and you've, you've got to celebrate that yeah. in such a big way. And so for everybody at Golden Care, everybody at Integrity, congratulations on 50 years, and here's to 50 more. God bless you all, and have a great week. <laughs>